Hi everyone, this is Ravi. Welcome to Tricentis Tosca Automation Tutorial. As you all know, I have already published 12 YouTube videos covering different concepts of Tricentis Tosca latest version 16. So in my previous session, I have covered the action modes select, verify and then wait on. Okay, so I would recommend you guys to please go through my previous session before watch this session so that you can understand the concepts very well. And this is our lesson 13 where I'm going to teach you the action mode buffer. How can we use the action mode buffer while automating your test cases? And then how can you use the math function while automating your test cases. So math functions and action mode buffer are very very important concepts while performing some verification as part of your test case automation. And also I'm going to teach you dynamic expressions like dynamic text, dynamic numbers and the dynamic dates. How can you use dynamic text? How can you use the dynamic numbers and the dynamic dates while automating your test cases and provide your test data, dynamic test data instead of static test data as an input to your test case. Okay, so these are all really very very important concepts to automate your test cases and to make it very easy to automate your business cases okay please do subscribe to the channel click on bell icon you'll receive notifications whenever i publish more videos stay tuned and let's jump on to the next slides okay so our next agenda item is dynamic expressions how can you use dynamic expressions while automating your test cases by using latest version of Tosca 16. So I'm going to teach you how to use math functions and then how can you use dynamic text or how can you generate dynamic text and then use it as a test data while automating your test cases. And how can you generate random or dynamic random values while automating your test cases. And then how can you generate dynamic date while automating your test cases? So I'm going to teach you with examples while automating one of our test cases. So now let's jump onto the system and see how can we use all these concepts practically by using Tosca 16. Okay, so this is my Tosca 16. Uh, if you remember, so in my previous session, we have covered action modes, right? For that, we have created this folder and the entire test case. And I explained you about the action modes, verify, select and wait on. Okay. So I'm going to copy the same folder here. Copy. And let's duplicate the folder in the parent folder. Parent folder. Okay. So I'm duplicating the um, work as of now, but going forward, we are going to use the reusable functions. Okay. Uh, but yeah, for this session, let me rename this folder as session 13. First, let's let me cover buffer and math function. Okay. Okay, so if you see the agenda item, right, if you see the agendas, first we need to cover the action mode buffer and I'm going to cover even math function along with the buffer, okay. So here, let's expand this. Let's expand, let's go to process, under process, order product, okay. Under order product, blue jeans. When you are actually ordering the blue jeans, let's go to apparel and shoes and go to blue jeans. Here we are specifying the quantity and the price. 
I mean, it shows the price and where you are specifying the quantity as 25 and add to cart, right? So here I want to capture the price of blue jeans so that I can verify the price of my blue jeans during checkout process. Okay. So now for one blue jeans, this is the price. Now, when I, when I am checking out 25 blue jeans, right, I want to verify the price. So that's why I'm going to store the price of blue jeans into a buffer. Okay. So if you see, this is my price container, right? I already captured all the controls. If you see, this is my price container and this is my quantity edit box. This is my add to cart button right so for this price i want to capture the inner text so if you go here simple see when you want to capture the inner text go to this arrow mark go to property click on inner text operator equal to here specify the buffer variable name price blue jeans price blue jeans this is what the variable or the buffer i want to store okay and once you done this see i specified this here i need to use action mode as buffer as soon as i select this this equal will turn into arrow mark that means the inner text is stored under the variable call or under the buffer called price blue jeans okay that's done now save this and now once i store the price of this blue jeans let's go to your shopping cart and let's check out these 25 blue jeans says continue 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 okay here before i confirm the order i want to verify all these items whether the price is correct or not i want to verify the subtotal of the subtotal i want to verify if subtotal plus uh, shipping ground these two are i want to verify subtotal and the total along with the shipping shipping cost okay so here let's go to for that let's go to one of the folder called verification of prices here in my previous session i have already showed you verifying the shipping cost whatever the shipping cost is ten dollars right so i would recommend you guys to visit my previous session to see the action modes verify select and then wait on okay so we already verified the shipping ground cost as ten dollars so now i want to verify the subtotal go to subtotal what is my subtotal my subtotal is now he here you need to use the math function what is my subtotal my subtotal is price of each one jeans multiplied by the quantity of the jeans correct so that becomes my subtotal okay so for that we need to use the math function okay math function curly braces it starts with curly braces so as soon as you, i enter math it is showing me the math function okay and then open braces square bracket and again the buffer function you need to specify under b i already explained you in my previous slides right curly braces b square braces here you need to call the buffer that where we store the price right price blue jeans we already stored so if you see it is automatically populating my buffer variable that i stored in my previous module correct so call that buffer price blue jeans 
so let's price blue jeans and then close square braces and then you need to close your curly braces multiplied by so price of the blue jeans multiplied by the quantity what is the quantity that we are taking it's 25 quantity right and then make sure that you close all the braces okay so if you see if the formula is correct it automatically converts into math blue jeans which is sorry here yeah math blue jeans buffer multiplied by quantity which is 25 if you see go back to by quantity okay let me go back to start checkout process if you see here so okay order product okay if you see here i'm actually adding quantity of 25 so that's the reason i entered 25 okay so that is how you can use math function and the buffer function and also i want to verify the subtotal okay what is the uh, sorry what is my subtotal correct so if you see here my subtotal again the total sorry the total if you see the total total is the ground shipping method and your subtotal correct so now let's go here let's first store my subtotal what is my subtotal is this let me store the subtotal into a buffer again okay sub total okay let me store sub total into a buffer here you need to store into buffer okay so here again the verification part i have to convert into numeric okay i have to make sure it's a numeric so now what i am doing again subtotal i am storing into buffer and now what is my total my total is my total is again math function my total is subtotal plus my shipping cost correct subtotal my plus shipping cost so here again math function math okay math open square braces open curly braces buffer again open square braces here i need to call subtotal right the buffer which i stored in the above step my subtotal plus 10 correct subtotal close braces plus my shipping cost here shipping cost okay close all the braces so this is my total i'm verifying if the total is equivalent to my subtotal plus shipping cost of 10 okay here i'm already storing subtotal into a buffer okay so now let's run this run this total test case okay let me log out and see if it works okay close Let's go to shopping cart, right click and run in scratch book. It should open the web shop. Okay, login. I think we have to make small change because, okay, shopping cart is empty. I have to make sure shopping cart is empty. No. So it's going to fail. Okay, it is going to fail because if you see the shopping cart already 25 uh sorry the 25 items are available so let me do one thing let me do one thing let me close this okay let's clear our shopping cart let me empty my shopping cart okay so now let's log out again close now let's run this again
login logged in apparel and shoes blue jeans now it adds the quantity 25 done add okay let's run this again okay let's run this again okay close now let's run this again okay right click run in scratch book so it opens the web shop correct login and then apparels and shoes click on blue jeans let's click on blue jeans let's see what happened more than one controller Okay, let's run one more time. Okay, on Scratchbook. So it's going to open the web shop. Click on login. It enters username, password, apparel and shoes. And then you should click on blue jeans. Now it enters correct. And it's going to check out. Done. Click on continue continue so now at the confirmation page it should basically verify the prices if you see 25 25 plus 10 35 that's correct so successful the execution should be successful perfect i think a small there is a small discrepancy let's see what is the discrepancy okay so now if you see here Car total, car total, yeah, this one total is failed because, okay, uh, basically what we did, the expected is 35 and actually is 35. Here, let's go back to verify prices. Sorry, verification of the prices. And here, let me convert into numeric. Okay, that we missed. So if you convert into numeric, it's going to run successfully and then all the results will be passed. Okay, let me run one more time. It opens web shop, login, email address, apples and shoes, blue jeans, enters the quantity done i agree check out so now the verification of two things one is we are verifying shipping cost by using verify sorry ground shipping cost and then we are using math function to add ground versus subtotal right and then we, we are verifying total amount so now the result should be successful perfect if you see everything is green at the bottom so that means all the results are success see here let's go back to verify prices okay verification of prices shipping method shipping method confirm order verify order successful let's see confirm order okay here so here verification of prices if you see First one is we verified just shipping cost is 10, 10 by using verify function. 
and here we used buffer method okay subtotal is the price of your blue jeans where we added the price of blue jeans into a buffer called price blue jeans and then that multiplied by the quantity so now that is equal to your subtotal that is displaying on screen and then we stored this subtotal into a buffer and we are calculating total by using again math function subtotal plus your shipping cost right now successfully expected is 35 actually is 35 okay hope you understand our first two concepts buffer and math function now let's see dynamic text and random values how can we use these dynamic dynamic text and random values okay and dynamic date okay now for that let's copy this again let's copy this session 13 copy this entire folder and paste it into your parent folder and modify the name let's modify the name of this folder as session 13 here dynamic values and dynamic text numbers dates okay done once you modify the name now let's go to your process and then checkout process under checkout process i want to go for a payment information credit card okay here so let's do one thing this time i want to instead of using the card holder name constant barbara garden instead of the static value i want to generate a random text okay a random text how can we generate random text that's what i'm going to show here okay here let's use the function called random text random text if you see here this is my random text my random text and what is how much random text i want to use i want to use the random text of 10 what it means it actually generates a random text with the length of 10 random text with the length of 10 okay to validate these formulas right earlier also i thought of uh, let me explain that see whatever the math functions you wrote here if you want to validate if the function is correct or not right click and you need to run uh, you need to translate the value translate value see if you see okay the value is translated to 25 that means the formula is correct here again translate value 35 that's correct in the same way here random text you can basically translate the value see it generating the random text of 10 right and then let's do random value so if you see the credit card whatever the credit card that we are providing here you can basically provide a random value okay how let's say here the card code i want to generate a random value for that you can use rnd okay curly braces rnd this is my function rnd and how i want to generate the values from 100 to 999 so what it will do it generates a random value between 100 and 999 okay this is how you can generate the random value 
let's validate this translate value see it is generating 652 random value and then now instead of let's use random dates okay here instead of providing month hard coded value of april i want to generate the date how let's create a date function date and here i want to use a date function where the date is plus four months that means it's got and generate a date which is four months from now okay it's going to generate a month sorry it's going to generate a month four months from from now okay what is the format i want to print in the format of mm and close braces okay so here what it will do current date plus four months so that means and it generates in the form of 040506 let's say now it's a january that means it's gonna go for may right let's say it is february then it's gonna go for march april may june okay so basically i am actually generating the date dynamically i am not hard coding the date now how can I generate year? Instead of 2023, I want to generate the year dynamically. Again, the date function. Date, this time, instead of month, I need to use year. Let's say I want to use the year three years from now. Okay? Three years from now, in the form of y y y y in the form of y y y y okay so let's close the braces so if you see here what does this function do it takes the year three years from now additional three years from now in the form of y y y y okay so now let's save all this and see how these random, all, all dynamic values, whatever we provided here, right? Dynamic text, dynamic random values, dynamic date, okay? How does these translates into application? Let's run this test, okay? Let's run this test. Right click, run in scratch book. So now it opens your web shop especially we need to concentrate on your credit card information that when, when we are entering okay is it going to generate the random value successfully or not okay done perfect so if you see when it comes to payment information now it creates yeah if you see here now card holder name is different right you can see the card holder name is different and everything is different let's go and verify the results okay so if you see the results here if you see the results here under payment information okay it actually generated all these card code and all these things i think hope you all see hope you all understand how to generate the dates and all right random dates dynamic dates dynamic text dynamic values okay so this way instead of using your hard coded values you can generate some dynamic values okay Hope you all understand the concepts. If you have any queries, leave your queries in the comment box. I will try to respond to your queries. Thank you. Hope you all understand the concepts of how to use the action mode buffer. And then how can we use different kind of dynamic expressions while automating your test cases by using 
present is Tosca 16. If you have any queries, you can leave your comments in the comment box. I will try to respond to your queries. Please do subscribe to the channel, click on bell icon, you will receive notifications whenever I publish more videos. Thank you.